you at least film me real quick standing in front of this thing? Sweet. You want a picture? Sure. Is it blurry? It's not as blurry. Let me take a picture with <laughs> my kit. Did you see want a picture in front of this uh, long dark tunnel? What? Dark. What, what it's very dark. Well it's dark at the, the bottom. Slide all the way down. Okay. I got you in a couple awkward poses. Oh, yeah. Danny, you want a picture down the pool? Okay. Turn around. Look at me. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Oh, I feel like you got to make stupid face. Yeah, no, now you look normal. Oh, no. What? Is it cold? It always has no, 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 looking normal. Yeah, it was catchy looking normal. It's nice to it's not enough. No smoking. How's it going, guys? Uh, Pretty good. Uh, guys, just to program this out for you real quick, a uh, few more rules. Just stay behind me at all times. No smoking in the cave. Please don't litter and please do not touch any of our walls or formation. They'll be $500. Uh, other than that, guys, if you have any questions, problems, just let me know. I'll get your answer. I'll take care of it. But I uh, just want to welcome you all to the Lost Sea. And my name is Isaac. I'll be your tour guide. Awesome. Right, photos guys. are permitted. As many as you want to. Come on down this way, guys. Yay, Kate. Start from the way, guys. We're going to continue on. This is what? What do you want to do? This is the environment that they live in their houses. Wait, what does? Drop. Dragons? Drow. Drow? Oh, drow. Yes, dark elves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Goddamn, it's your race. It's your race. Jenny, take, a, take my picture in front of All right, guys. Lights. Now, what we're looking at next is right up here. These formations that kind of resemble a shark's mouth. This is called the Veil of Tears. Now, the ones on the top coming down, these are called stalactites. And the ones on the bottom going up, these are called stalagmites. Now that can be a little tricky. A good one to remember is stalactites will hold tightly to the ceiling and stalagmites might just grow up. Now if they do grow up, they eventually connect and form one of those. Oh. Now guys, this is actually called a column or a pillar. And some of this you'll notice is all this plant life. These are called U-Haul plants because you haul them in. Now <laughs> when you're outside, see some spores sticks your clothes and in your hair. When you come down the gate, they're released into the air. They will land next to these light bulbs and you use artificial sunlight. Now, the water that we just walked past, and you guys will be hearing and seeing throughout the tour, is they get most of their water from. It is also 99 to 100% humidity down here. So if you have long hair, you probably won't leave with a good hair day. Mm. Can we hold this for a second? Yeah, I'm going to put up my hair. I was about to put the hair on your right hand side. very strange. Oh, it's still came over. It, yeah, it's gonna because of the lighting. There we go. Can you imagine the people that used to live down here? They like cave dwellers? <laughs> no, like drow. Yeah. <laughs> here. Oh, well, no. Those type of people. These caves used to be used by a lot of the people in the um, Revolution, Confederacy, that type of thing, and they would actually chill down here, build fires, and use these as kind of like as barracks and stuff. <laughs> ah, sorry. My mail is still going to go off. But I mean, that's pretty cool. Some like, hey, paper guys have found this cave. You know how caves are formed? It's uh, like uh, there's three or four ways a cave can get formed. Alright guys, now right over here, this is called the Indian Council Chamber. It's called that because in the 1820s, a Cherokee Indian by the name of Chief Craighead discovered okay. the entire cave. Okay. Now, you got the land of the Hawassi Alkali Land Grant, and we believe that he used this room for powwows or meetings. 
We know it's here because in 1927, a group of teenagers came to explore the cave, and in this room they found broken pottery, jewelry, and arrowheads. Now, most of those up in the display case by the gift shop, and you guys can check them out after the tour. Guys, if you look right up here, you notice these. Now, these are anthodites, and that is the Greek word for cake flower. Now, this is not necessarily a flower, though. This is a really, really rare formation. So rare, in fact, there are only eight caves in the entire world that have these. These ones up here, though, are not active. We can tell because of the brown color throughout them. And if you guys follow me, I'll show you some active ones. They're a white and type of peach color. We go right through here. As you go by, please wash your head to the lower ones. <laughs> Look at this cabin. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow, pretty. It's really, really moldy. Now, guys, once you get a good look, go down the left-hand pathway and stop right in front of the sign that says do not sit on him. Guys, if you haven't seen me yet, they get there right up here before. Oh, that's a lot of Do not sit on hands. Sit on your butt. <laughs> Keep your hand to yourself. <laughs> That'd be pretty awesome to have a 1965 Cindy was here. That'd be the best someone was here. <laughs> Melissa and Jeremy. TR Hanny. Ooh, a hole. That's a hole you could get lost in. With the what? The bug bear. <laughs> Not so much, just that little patch. But in a hundred years it will all be historical. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. 2065. 1,000 years ago, some teenagers came here and defaced these walls. Yeah, they said that it would future All right, guys, now we're going to go right through here. Now, As we go by, please walk straight through punching. the low rocks right over here. And guys, in the middle of this room, there are some seats. You guys sit down if you'd like to. There we go. Focus. Turn around. Hey, turn around. Yeah. Yeah.
Hudson Lock. Now, the Hawk Head is a natural cave formed by water. It's actually formed by two rivers. One coming in from the way that we did back up there, and the other coming in from right up here. Now, rivers collide there from whirlpools, and the big storm occurred just above our heads here. Something else that will occur while this whirlpool is occurring are these bedrock pendants. And this is actually the start and the beginning of our cave, and this is the only room that will be found in this cave like this. Now guys, at the beginning of the tour, I said I was going to show you where the natural to the cave is. The natural to the cave is located right up there. It consists of a 132 step drop at about a 45 degree angle. It's pretty cool. Throughout history though, this room and the room there used a few things. In the 1940s, there was a bar called the Cavern Taverns. This bar had three dance floors, three moonshine stills, and a live band that would come down and play every night. The only problem though is that when you're in a cave like this, down the lower levels, there's actually a different pressure on your brain that uh, allows you to drink twice as much. Hmm. But they didn't know that. <laughs> uh, they would come down here and drink and drink and drink, and they'd get really mad that they're getting served bad alcohol. They would head back up those steps, and the higher up they got, the more option they got, so the drunker they got. They would hit the halfway point, pass out, and fall back down. <laughs> Not only injured themselves, but who was behind them, and that's why the bar was closed four short months later. <laughs> now guys, also in the 1940s, at the very far back of that room, there's a big huge pit that goes at about 90 feet or so. At the bottom, the sign has found some bones. These bones belong to a plasticine jaguar. That means prehistoric. This cat was 500 to 600 pounds and was 8 feet long. <coughs> now, we have molded the cat's head and paw print back to the display case, but the actual bones were stripped off in New York City for display in the Natural History Museum. And guys, one more thing, in the 1950s, you stay fall in July. Now, we can hold 20,000 people, like spot for two weeks off of these down here. And guys, right down there, those are saltine crackers. Ooh. And it was never actually used to fall shelter, so most of these were just disposed of. Now, if you got the chance and they allowed you to actually go down there, there are a few canisters that's not been tampered with where the crackers are still good. They're just really bland, no <laughs> taste, and I really don't recommend them. <laughs> Did you actually try these crackers? I'm not allowed to answer that. <laughs> but uh, guys, before we leave, if you would please turn off all your lights, any phones, cameras, anything giving off any light whatsoever, we all can experience total darkness and those will take away from the effect. Mm -hmm. Now as long as your phone's in your pocket and the screen is off, it won't be a problem, but your camera has to be all the way off. And guys, probably the biggest rule for this is please get to somebody you know or somebody that you would like to know. <laughs> 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 I don't know any of you guys. I don't know yeah, you can just be alone I'm like a man. Finished. Real men aren't afraid of the dark. No. <laughs> like hey, hey, how many real men does it take to turn right, guys, uh, to change a light bulb? Two. One, two, three. Now, guys, this is total darkness. You do not see your hand in front of your face. No, I can't. He does not want you can burn out your eyes with total darkness. That's terrifying. <laughs> Would they like sober up at the bottom of the hill? But, but now science, science <laughs> helps us what? Would they become undrunk as soon as they go back down? For the most part, they were knocked out. They were, didn't really know where they were at from that. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what happens if you experience total darkness like that, so you just wrap your eyes closed? Do you burn them out still? Well, people ask me about the same thing if you were to close your eyes. Yeah. The fact that your uh, pupils are experiencing no light whatsoever, they just burn out. Mm. And it's not like other cases where, you know how some people are stuck in a, a mining accident or something like that and they come out with uh, really high definition sunglasses. Yeah. Well, I mean, they haven't been down there long enough to experience it, so their eyes can eventually adjust back. <clears throat> but once you're down here for two weeks, they don't adjust back. You're just mm. blind for the rest of your life. Wow. Mm -hmm. That would suck. You'd be stuck in a mining accident for two weeks. Assuming yeah. You can that yeah. And then you come out blind. Well, I mean, if they know where you're at, they could possibly get you a flashlight or something that would help. 
But then again, if you're in total darkness for two weeks, chances are you're probably bonking by the time you get out. Yeah, so. <laughs> Let me take my picture in front of this cave looking part. You mean in front of everything? Yes. <laughs> and seeing things because it helps me understand D&D that much better. <laughs> That's a good reason. It feels super good down here. It does. I'm pretty glad I didn't bring that sweater. All right, guys. Now over here to your left hand side, we want a big red hole. Now we call this the devil's hole. Ooh. It's called that because if you look inside and you haven't married good these past few years, you might see the face of the devil or your mother-in-law. It's red. Wait, why is it red? So, has anyone gone down there? Oh, I've been there pooping holes. Wait, stay right there. Don't move. Okay, go. One, two, three. Ah, you're going to move it. <laughs> you mean breathing? Yes. <laughs> Alright, guys, now, interesting story about that hole. A little girl in the room one time, went to look inside, came back screaming and crying, saying he saw the face of the devil. Now, when the tour guide finally got the courage to go check it out, he discovered that it was actually our maintenance man, Jeff, changing the light bulb, and we started calling Devil Soul after that. Now guys, that is a natural hole. It goes down about 14 feet, then dies down the size of a softball. Hmm. The hole will continue to go all the way to our lake room, and science believe at one point water is churned through there. Now, we're about to go down this really steep hill, so if you all please use the handrail over on your right hand side, and not the one on your left hand side, because it does stop right before it gets steep. Hmm. Last thing guys, if anyone falls, just scream out really loud, and I can get out of the way. Safety first. <laughs> Oh, Looks like saltine good. rocks or something. No, it's two burger boxes for the night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh? Oh, good. Right here. Now, guys, the only catch though is you will miss. Oh. Yeah, I'll pick it up. I need to take a picture of him. Yeah. Can I take my picture in front of this? I'll take yours. Okay. Hold okay. on, let me fill it for a few seconds. Okay. Oh, I'm going to get it. Okay. Stay where you are. Look over. Whenever you're ready. Guys, right over here, this is your crystal ball. It is a natural. Here is something about this water is drinkable. I know it's beautiful. I don't think you should bathe down here. I bet you could, but I just steam remains. Like, it's disgustingly cold. I bet it's beautifully cold. Thank you. 
You get signal down here? No. But as soon as I get up, I'll it's Like, it's stored in the front house. Oh, Authentic Tennessee moonshine still. There's like zero critters down here. Yeah. All right, guys. Now, right over there, that is our authentic Tennessee moonshine still. It's one of the original ones from the bar that I was talking about earlier. Now, all three of these were taken out. That one is in the best condition, so we put it right over there. The second one is across the street from the general store. <laughs> Somehow the third one ended up in my backyard because that's a different floor and I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, guys, as it's on the hill, please watch the rest of the lower off over on your right hand 